CCMP family, we are so excited to have you here today to worship with us. Make sure you grab a bulletin. It is packed full of all the information that you will need. My absolute favorite time of the month is here again, Ignite, tomorrow night, starting at 6 with food. You want to be there. It's explosive. Calling all women to the women's breakfast this Saturday at 9 in the worship center. Are you looking for an awesome opportunity to give back to our youth group, the tribe? Well, do not miss this Saturday barbecue fundraiser at 11 a.m., $10 until they sell out. Drive through and get some of the best barbecue you could have. If you are new with us today, make sure to check out the Connection Center in the back of the church. You can sign up for upcoming events, learn all you need to about CCMP. They'll pray with you and may have a free gift for you to check out. All right, good morning, family. Let's stand up this morning and worship together.
my mother's womb. You formed me with your hands and known and loved by you. Before I took a breath, and when I doubt it, Lord, remind me I'm wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter on the canvas and the clay. into our prayer time folks and if you have a burden on your heart you just want to pray for someone this altar is open let's pray to God Lord we are we're a canvas Father we're, we're a piece of clay Father we ask that you paint us the way you would have us to be. Father, mold us for we're wonderfully made, Father. Please remind us of that with all of our flaws, Father, with all of the things that we've done wrong, with all of the things that we deal with and worry about, we are wonderfully made.
so inspiring to know that, Father, that no matter what we've been through, you love us. And you take that canvas and you take that piece of clay and you mold us, Father, into what we become today. We're all here for a reason, Lord. We've been prayed into this building, Father. We're not here by coincidence, Father. And it's never too late or too early to serve, Father. We're not too young or too old to serve. When we come here, we should be serving you. We should be doing the work, Father, because that's what makes you happy, Father. So put it in our hearts, Father, to know that if we think we're done, <laughs> we're not done, Father. I know I'm not done. I got a lot left in my tank, Lord. You're not finished with me yet. So, Father, put that into our hearts this morning that you're not finished. We have so much more to do, Father. As a church, as a body, as a believer, there's so much work to be done. And you're not finished with us yet, Father. We love you, Lord. We praise you. Amen. Would you sing this with me? You're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. And you're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. And you're not finished with me. You're not finished with me yet. And you're not finished with me. You're not finished with me. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you. Good morning. Great song. Finish this phrase. It's not over till the... Now, see, I wasn't going to say that. Y'all the one said that about, you know, the lady. Uh, that, we all know that phrase. But here's the thing. That's not true. It's not over till God says it's over. Does everybody understand that? You might be sitting here today and you might be thinking, man, I'm done. I can't take anymore. Have you ever, have you ever thought that? Have you ever said that to yourself or to somebody else? It is not over till God says it's over. So don't be quitting till God says it's done. How's your March Madness? Oh. I've been thinking a lot about this. I like basketball. March Madness, you know, sometimes that makes people mad. March Madness. That's that's how that works, with except the people that are winning. <coughs> Do you all understand that we could have a Duke Carolina championship? Have you all thought, has anybody thought about that besides me? No, the, the one before. So we could have, do y'all know that there will be churches split in the next weekend? So March Madness. I like it. Thank you for being here today. Uh, online church, thank you for joining. Come on in, get yourself comfortable. 
and uh, I'm so glad a lot of people are able to catch us online. If you're if you're ever out of town or not able to watch us here, to be here with us, you join us online. And what you can do is, uh, what I do is I just share that. Like I put it on my Facebook page, and then a lot of other people who stalk my page get to see the service. So uh, if you're not here, watch us online and, and share, because... Uh, a lot of people enjoy, and we, we, we're, we're, glad that you're, we're glad you're here. We're glad you're in the building today. If you're our guest, we're honored that you're here. It means a lot to us. Um, I hope you get a bulletin. Make sure don't leave without a bulletin. This will help you. Uh, there's a lot of things this week coming up this weekend, things that are important. And so uh, you, can, you can have all that here and refer to our website. Or my, in my smartphone, I have a little green circle on my app. And it, it says CCMP app. You can go to your to the app store and get the CCMP app. And that that makes us that makes me feel pretty cool about you know we have an app. Do you? So anyway, um, get your bulletin, and uh, you'll hear uh, Pastor Jason's going to talk at the end a little bit more about something really important and really exciting. So make sure you have your bulletin. Today we are going to finish up the study in the Book of Judges. Now, I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand because I don't want to make you, you know, I don't want to damage your psyche, which is a big thing today. Got to be careful to not hurt people's feelings because we're all so delicate. But um, don't raise your hand if you have read your homework every week in Judges. Then good for you. If, if I was your teacher, which I used to be a teacher, I, I would put you in time out if you didn't do your assignment. So you still have time. There's still hope. I want you to read for this lesson chapters 15 and 16. If you've not done that yet, and we're going to wrap up our study, and our character today is Samson. Amazing guy. Uh, here's the name of our, our, our lesson today. Long Locks. Ladies and losses. And that kind of is going to be the narrative as we go through the story of Samson today. We're going to finish it up. Uh, next Sunday is going to be very exciting. I don't want you to miss next Sunday. And then y'all realize we're only a few weeks away from Easter. Everybody, know? It's amazing. So, well, we got some real treats for y'all. But today we're going to dive in and we're going to learn some things from Samson. Father, would you help us to be still and just allow the Holy Spirit to take your word and speak truth into our minds, into our hearts today? God, uh, show us something that we need. Show us something new. And God, we just surrender our thoughts to you today so that you could, that you could teach us. Thank you for the book of Judges. Thank you for the Old Testament. Thank you for the ways that you teach us. Help us to listen and apply and obey. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want you to open up or look at chapter 16, and I'm going to read one verse because this one verse kind of capsulizes the, the story today. What I'm going to do is read verse 28, and that's going to be where we end up. Okay, so we're going we're gonna to talk today about Samson, and we're going to end up in verse 28. And here it is. Here's the verse. Chapter 16, verse 28 of the book of Judges. And Samson, watch what he did. He called unto the Lord. He called unto the Lord. And I think, man, that's a, that's a good start, Samson. That's a good, that's a good place for us to start today. Samson called unto the Lord. Now, Samson in this context is in a mess. And we're going to, I'll explain that to you as we go along. He's in a bad place. He's in a mess. So he gets in this bad situation because of his choices along the way. Now, sometimes we get in a mess. Sometimes we, we, we all get in a mess. And sometimes we say, oh, God, this is terrible. Why am I here? Why did you do this to me, God, when really it's your fault? Because of the choices we make, we, we get in, 
So Samson was notorious for making maybe not so good choices. And so here's where we are. He called unto the Lord and he said, O Lord God. And I want you to notice the two things he asked for. First thing he said, God, remember me. God, remember, remember your boy Samson? I'm, I'm, I messed up. I'm in a really bad place. And Samson is, knows that he, like Peter, can call out to the Lord and say, Lord, remember me. I pray thee. And now here's the irony. Here's what I want you to see. Remember me and strengthen me. You see that? Why is that ironic to me as I read that? What, what is the most outstanding feature that we know about Samson? What? Strongest man in the world. Have you ever, you remember when you were a little kid how you'd always hear, that the strongest man in the world. Yet, in this verse, he says, Father, remember me and what? Strengthen me. Don't miss that. Don't let that go right over your head. See, because here's how we are. Sometimes we get to feeling good about a certain part of our life. Like, man, I've got this. I got this. I have mastered this. Samson's like, I'm a pretty strong dude. I, 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 I would venture to say some might say even cocky as we look at the feats of Samson. Yet, at his last scene, he says, Lord, strengthen me. Be careful, because what may be a strength can actually turn out to be a weakness in your life. In Samson's life, his, his most outstanding feature was his strength. Yet, at the end, he lost it. I wonder why God gave us that message. Strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. You ever prayed this prayer? Oh, God, just one more. If you, God, if you, God, if you get me out of it, just one more time. God, I'm not going to ask you this anymore. Just one more time. You ever pray that? Samson did. Yeah, this this one more time today. <laughs> and then I'm going to need it again tomorrow. Ever, he, that's what he said. He said, God, I just this, this one more thing I need. This all, that's all I'm going to ask you. Just this once. Oh, God, that I may be at once avenged of the Philistines for my two. You know why he prayed that? They put out his eyes. And he said, God, just, just this once. I'm not going to ask you any more. He lost the thing that he was most known for, and that was his strength. Okay, now we're going to dive in there. Now what I need you to do today is, is listen fast because we're going to get through the rest of this story about Samson. Now let me review for a minute from last week. Last week we learned that God has a unique purpose for Samson and for you. God told his mama before he was born that I'm going to use this boy and he's going to deliver my people, of it, children of Israel. I'm going to use Samson. God had, he had a purpose. So do you. You may not know what it is yet. You may know what it is and not be doing it. So you have a purpose that, that nobody else has, only you. Custom made for you. We also learned that we all have some instructions. Remember Samson's? He, before he was born, God told the angel, said, now listen, mom and daddy, you're going to raise him as a Nazarite. You know what that means? That means there's three things. <laughs> you ever heard? Just one thing. I'm, three things, Samson. Three. Three things. Number one, uh, don't mess around grapes. <laughs> and that, I could say more about that, but 
don't don't be involved with grapes. Okay. Number two, don't touch something that's dead, carcass, dead things. Don't touch them because that's Nazar. You're Nazra. You're different. You don't. You don't. Number three, what's the third one? Don't cut your hair. Okay, two out of three ain't bad. I can do the hair thing. Um, that's all. Do you know that Samson messed up on all three of those? Just, just three things. You know what? That's not the three things that God told you, told your mama when you were born. That's not the three things. That was for Samson because of, he, w- he was to be raised as a Nazarite. Now, however... There is some structure that God gives you in your life, in your world today, now. There's a lot. I mean, we got this whole book right here. There's a lot of principles and guidelines that give us structure to live. You know, well, I'm free. Oh, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. And you get in your car and go, Psh! and all of a sudden you look behind you and there's these splashing lights. See, that happens. That's because we have rules in our lives to live by. You can't just go do whatever you feel like doing sometimes. And, and the choices you make, just as Samson, will affect how things turn out for you. So we learn that. Um, we learn that God will carry out his purpose. Listen, let me tell you all a secret. God is going to build his church. In fact, he don't really need me to do it. He he don't really need you either. Because God's going to do what God's going to do. We just get to be in on it. We get to be a part of this thing, this enterprise, this family. But he's going to do it with or without us. And some people don't learn that. They fight. They fight that all their life. When just just understand, God's going to get it done. Just get on that right side. And you can enjoy all that. We learned that last week. We also learned from Samson the danger of an undisciplined life. Samson was a little bit careless, maybe a lot careless. You know how Samson was. So first, remember, he's big and strong, right? A little bit of a kind of a bully. So when Samson saw something he wanted, guess what he did? He took it. He was really driven by, by that flesh. And, and he didn't have much discipline. And he was careless many times with his decision. That's what we learned last week. And we're going to see how that ends today for Samson, okay? All right, now, let me, uh, let's, let's, let me catch up. Uh, what a mess he was in. Remember, catch up now. He, instead of marrying this Philistine woman, remember? He went somewhere he shouldn't have been, and he met this woman, and he fell in love with her, and and she wasn't she was a Philistine, and he should have fell in love with a nice, pretty Jewish girl, but he didn't. And he went and saw this woman. He said, "Daddy, get her for me, cause I can have anything I want." And his daddy said, "Can't you find a pretty Jewish girl?" And he said, "No, I want this one." So he, he that's how we started, and then and then he went down there and and he got himself in trouble. He, he made a riddle and. And, and things didn't turn out well. And so he ended up getting mad because he had a bit of a temper problem. And he, uh, he ended up killing 30 Philistines because he had a little bet. And he got mad and he killed them. And he took their clothes and, and gave that to pay off his bet. And he got mad and he said, well, I'm mad and I'm not going to marry you. I'm going back home with my mom and daddy. And he did. So that's where we are. He's in a mess. And so he went back home, and, and he left angry. So he got home, and then, and then the seasons passed, and it's, it's harvest time, and, and he, he, he calmed down a little bit because <laughs> he tended to get a little, little angry. And he calmed down. And he said, you know what? I, that was bad of me. I, I shouldn't have done that. I really did love that girl, so I'm going back to make it right. And he goes to see the father-in-law. He says, you know what, man? I, I kind of showed out a little bit. My bad. Now, I'm here to get my wife. Father-in-law said, uh, uh, Samson, uh, I gave her to one of your buddies because you left mad. Now, how do you think that made Samson feel? 
Remember now, we got a little temper problem. Oh, oh, and the father-in-law, because he was scared, he said, oh, Samson, I got, here's her sister. Ain't she pretty? Because <laughs> he's, he's a little worried about Samson. And, and so here's, here's her sister. And that made Samson even more angry. And so here we go in your bulletin is point number one, the foxes and the fire. Chapter 15. Now, again, I, you, you're going to read these. I know y'all good students. So I'm going to explain to you what these verses say. Verses 3 through 13, Samson is furious. He's like, you did what? That's, that's my girl. That's the woman I love. I'm supposed to marry. And you gave her to somebody else? And so he's, his temper's taken over again. So he gets mad. Now, let me tell you what he did. You're not going to believe what he did. You're not going to believe this. Now, this is in verses 3 through 13. Uh, let me tell you this, this story by telling you another story. When I was a little boy in, in the country on the farm, I was fascinated by all of the animals in the woods. And, and, you know, we hunted fish and all that. So I was a bit of a trapper. And you may or may not understand what I'm talking about. But so what I did, I got me a little chicken, a little banty rooster. And many of you don't understand when I say banty rooster, what that is. But I got me a little chicken and I put him down in a wire cage uh, in the edge of the field right outside the woods. I put him in a little cage, and I got me four steel traps. You may know what a steel trap is. They're they're bear traps, but they're smaller. So what you do is you 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 pull them down apart like that, and you put the trigger in there, and it's it holds them flat like that. And and then you put those down in beside on all four corners of the little cage, and you cover them up with leaves. So what happens is. When somebody steps in there on that, they, the trap closes on them. It's the steel trap comes together. And it was so fascinating to me because in the morning, I couldn't wait to run out there and see what's in my traps. Do y'all know what kind of varmints you can catch in the country like that? Because everybody's poking around. Man, they all want a little bit of that little chicken. Little breakfast time, you know? So, bam. I've caught possums, co coons, raccoons, um, hoot owls, hawks. My friends, when you get a skunk in your trap, that's never a good thing. But it, it happens. Um, but my goal, you know what I was trying to catch? A fox. Now, foxes are hard to catch. They're little. They're fast. And I hate to hurt some of y'all's feelings. These beautiful little cute creatures are vicious. They mean. And so you get one, he steps in there, and bam, you got him. Now, a fox, what they'll do, they're so vicious, they'll chew their foot off to get out of the, out of the trap and go. So a lot of times you, you, you'll see their, their leg hanging in there in that trap. Am I am I being a little too graphic for you today? <laughs> Sorry, folks. This is just how life is uh, in the farm, in the world, in the real world. Uh, so anyway, occasionally he'd be still in there, and I'd get out there, and I'm like, "Oh man, I got me a fox. You got a red one or a gray one?" And so what I'd try to do is get him out of there and and sell them to fox hunters to train the puppies with. And so it's hard to get that old fox out of that trap. So I'd get me a toe sack. You don't know what a toe sack is. That's a, it's like duct tape for a farmer. So get your toe sack and sneak up there and try to get the fox without him chewing you up. And so here's my point. Preacher, what in the world are you telling me that for? Because my boy Samson caught 300 of them. 300 foxes. I don't know how he did it. I don't understand. I could hardly catch one. 300. Well, preacher, why would he, what's wrong with this man? This man was really angry at the, at the bad guys because they, they already messed him up and they gave his girlfriend away to somebody else and he's angry and he's mad and he's got a bad temper. And so he caught, somehow, he caught 300 foxes. 
Well, what do you do that for, preacher? Well, you're not going to believe this. He put them in pairs and he tied their tails together. I'm not making this up. That's why I need you to read this this week so you know I'm not making this up. I don't know how the guy does it. Does this? I don't know. So he gets 300 of them. He gets them by pairs and he ties their tails together. And then you know what he did? He's he lit their tails on fire. He was a little demented, I think. He used their tails as a torch. And then he released them. So you know what they did? What did they do? They ran and fleed as fast as they could. And he lit their tails on fire. And he let them run through the harvest fields of the Philistines. This guy's really devious here. He's like, I'll show them. So he goes and burns their grain, and he destroyed their olive trees by releasing these foxes and setting their tails on fire. Well, so see, you already got the Philistines who know who he is, and they already mad at Sam. They already hate him, and now this hatred is growing. Every act Samson seems to do is, is making them more and more mad. So there's the bad guys and Samson, and every chance he gets, he's doing stuff to make them more and more mad. How could one, I thought about, how can one man catch 300, I don't know how he can do this, but he, he did. I, I mean, that's what the Bible said, so I'm going to believe that. The, the Philistines were furious. They blamed, they, they got mad, and guess who they blamed? The father-in-law. So it's your fault. You the one gave his girlfriend away. If you hadn't have done that, we wouldn't be in this mess. So the bad guys burned him and his daughter with fire. I'm, yo, I'm serious. You need, you need to read this. It's incredible. <clears throat> so they burned his girlfriend and her father. So how do you think that made Samson feel? He's even, he's madder, he's madder than ever now. He's like, okay, okay, that's how y'all gonna be. All right, I'm just getting warmed up. This made him even more furious. Now, here's what I want you to notice about Samson. Samson began to be driven by rage. by rage, by revenge. He already hated the Philistines. And, and now they killed his ex-girlfriend and her daddy, and he's even more mad. And so it's getting... Well, the problem is... Do you know it's possible to do the right thing for the wrong reason. See, rage and anger is not the right motive. Now, in the in the big picture, Samson was killing Philistines. Okay, that's that's not that's kind of a good thing. That's kind of what God was wanting to do. But he when you when you do things out of rage and anger and revenge. That's an impure motive. And that's the way it seems to be what was driving Samson, our guy. It was God's will for Samson to destroy the Philistines. But Samson did it out of personal vengeance and rage. Sometimes we take matters into our own hands. Later, the Philistines marched into Judah. Here we go again. We're, it's worse than ever. They hate him. He hates them. But he's a big, strong dude, so there's not a lot they can do. Everybody's afraid of him. So they march into Judah. This is, this is Israel. They marching into to God's people, the good guys, and they made camp. Well, what we're going to do is we are here to capture our arch rival, Samson. So the, the Judah folks, the people in Judah, they said, ooh, this, this ain't going to be good for us. We got to do something. So they said, let's get a plan. Let's us go capture Samson 
and turn him over to the Philistines so they don't kill all of us. See? So that's a, that's a pretty smart plan. So Samson is up in a cave uh, in Etam. He's living in a cave. So we got 300 men from Judah. They, go, they say, all right, hang on, guys. Y'all Philistines, hang on. We're going to go get him for you, and we'll bring him to you. That'll make us look like good guys, and y'all won't be so bad to us. Y'all won't kill us. So they go, and they find Samson in a cave, 3,000 of them. And so they go, and they say, Samson says, what y'all doing here? What's up? And they go, Samson, we, we came to get you because we the, the Philistines are going to kill us. And if we can get you and turn you over to them, then, they, then that'll make things better for us. And Samson thought, I imagine, and uh, Samson said, okay, because, you know, that's his people, and he hates the Philistines. So he said, okay, but promise me this, that you will not take my life. I don't want my own people to kill me. So don't promise, y'all promise me now, I'm one of you. Don't ki- I don't want y'all to kill me. And they, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, we will. So they tied him up with, with, with new ropes. Okay, but that's big, strong ones, you know. So they, they, they bind him, and they kept, take him down there to Lehi, and the Philistines shouted because they, oh, here he is, woo we got, there he is, our enemy, we got, woo Well, the problem was, Samson wasn't the least bit worried about those ropes. So they got him. Samson goes, hey, watch this. <laughs> so the ropes meant deadly to, the, to, to Samson. You see, because the Spirit of the Lord came on him and gave him that strength. He snapped the ropes as if they were cotton strings, the Bible tells us. The next thing that happened, this thing's going to continue for a little bit. It's going to keep getting worse. So in, in haste, he broke out, and here he is, and he's mad and, at the Philistines again. And so here, here they are, and, and they all around him, and they're going to capture him and kill him and all that. And Sam, he's in a rage. And so he, he starts looking around, and he reaches down, and he picks up something. You know what it is? It's the jawbone of a donkey. Y'all thought I was going to say something else, didn't you? It's the jawbone of a donkey. And now, uh, and again, I, I'm trying to see all this in my mind. He's mad. He's in a rage. He's a big, strong dude. And he picks up a bone. Well, now, wait a minute, Samson. You're not supposed to touch stuff that are dead. <laughs> you messed up again. I got it. You needed a, a weapon. I got you. But you messed up again. So in his haste, he grabbed. And you know what he did with that jawbone? Oh, he went, he went crazy, Hudson. He did. He killed 1,000 Philistines. That's, that's pretty hard for me to believe. He picked up the jawbone of a donkey and used it as a club to fight off the Philistines. Once again, he disregarded the Nazarite vow not to touch anything of a dead animal. After he had killed 1,000 Philistines with the jawbone, he threw it away and chanted. This is verse 16. With a donkey's jawbone, I have killed 1,000 men. He's getting pretty cocky now. Now, here's what I can't figure out. How can, how, how can 1,000 men not capture one guy? I mean, let's think about this. Wouldn't you think, okay, I'll tell you what, you, you, you 500, get over there, us 500, one of them, we'll all run in, jump on him, we'll get him down, just all pile on him, We're just by numbers. C- can we not do this, guys? He killed a 1,000 Philistines with a bone. Now, uh, and again, you know, my imagination is, is a little messed up, so I'm, y'all know what Clint Eastwood would have done. Chuck Norris. Oh, Clint would have went. That's what my man Clint Eastwood. But I guess they didn't have those little whatever kind of gun. Remember that long pistol with the big long barrel on it? Man, old Clint was bad with that. But 
They didn't. They didn't. I, I would have figured out there's some way these thousand men could have killed, but, but they didn't. See, God gave him power. God, the Spirit of God, can, can do things with you that you could never do by yourself. You might be thinking, I can't whip this. I might as well give up. And my job, my friends, I'm getting bullied. My bu- I, it's my home. It's all, guess what? If God can kill a thousand men with one man and a jawbone, what can he do for you? You don't think he, don't ever say, oh, it, 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 I, it can never get any worse. This, don't say that. Whatever mess you're in, God can fix it. God can get you out of that. So we got to move quick now. So uh, now we're in chapter 16. And so we got the Philistines and the Israelites, and everybody now is afraid of Samson. I mean, here, here he comes, they're all running. Man, there he comes. They're afraid to, it doesn't matter. Everybody's afraid of Samson. And so they, they, uh, they get in this, this situation where they got him, in, and they got him locked up in this town, this place, and it has giant fence. And so here's our chance. We got him locked in. We locked the gates on him, and we got him in here, and we got him. He can't get away. And in the morning, we'll get in there, and we'll get him, and we'll kill him. <sighs> well, at midnight, Samson gets up. You know, I need to get out of here. These guys, they're going to come after me. So he goes over to the gate. Now, I'm not talking about a little picket fence here, okay? It's a big old giant wooden gate. We don't even know how much, how big. And he's carrying these gates for 20 miles. So he just walks on out, and he don't even throw the gate. He just carries it with him. Y'all, this is, this is a bad dude here. I don't even know how to explain it. I don't even understand the things that he did. So he got up at midnight, tore the gates, huge gate post, carried him about 20 miles to the top of a mountain in his own country, and threw him down there. He said, y'all ain't, gonna, y'all ain't got nothing for me. You thought you had me 100 times. You ain't got nothing on me. Phenomenal feat, unbelievable for one man by himself. The Philistines were beaten again. Samson was too strong and too smart for them, and they got more and more and more furious. For 20 years, Samson reigned. Now, here again, my imagination, I'm like, I don't read anything in here that talks about his judgeship. I mean, I don't know what his... Uh, but for 20 years, he, he was the judge. I guess, I guess he can do whatever he wants. So he's the judge, and, and we, we read his exploits and his stories, but it appeared that he was driven by his own rage. The Philistines hated him, and their hatred grew, yet he continued to travel about in their country. So here he goes back. He don't go to his place. He goes over to their place, and, and guess what happened, y'all? He sees her. There she is. Oh, 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 there she is. Her name is Delilah. Oh. Now, again, I'm thinking, I, I imagine he could have any woman he wanted, right? She probably, you know, cream of the crop, I guess, I would think. Um, he fell in love with her right away. Perhaps this woman could give them the key to his strength, the Philistines noticed. Mm. Here, here, here's, maybe here's their, here's their angle. All right, we can't whip him. We can't fight him in war. We can't trick him. We can't do this. How about a woman? Maybe they were thinking, many a mighty man has been brought to his knees by a woman. Maybe. I don't know. I'm just saying. It appears, as we read, this is chapter 16, verses 4 through 22, as you read. It appears that Delilah was as heartless and wicked as she was beautiful. So they they came to her, her people. The Philistines came to her, and they said, Delilah. You love your country, don't you? 
we're going we're going you know what we want you to trick him and find out the secret to his strength you can do that and she said well why would i do that and they said cuz we're going to give you a lot of money to do that in fact they said uh we're going to give you 1100 silver coins from each of us and i don't know how many there were exactly so that was an enticing offer and she agreed so her, here, here they are. They're in love. Samson is smitten. He's, he's infatuated with Delilah. And, and here she goes. Oh, Samson. Oh, Samson. I can see your big muscles bulging as the, uh, you're so, you're, oh, I don't know, whatever. You, you use your own imagination. Samson, oh, Samson, tell me. Tell me what gives you your great strength. Well, you know, I work out over there about it. And I, I don't know, maybe, but that's not what he said. Please, Samson, oh, please. Man, she kept on. And so Samson is playful. Samson says, okay, let's toy with her. And he tricks her three times. He says, well, here it is, and if they'll come do this, then you got me. Oh, yeah, that's it. Psst, come get it. And they did it, and Samson laughing. <laughs> got me? How was that? And he did it again. And, and she's embarrassed because he's humiliating her because Samson's playing with her. He's like, uh, Okay, here, do this. And he did it again, and he laughed. She said, oh, Samson, you don't love me. You're making fun of me. You're mocking me. He said, all right. All right. If you get my seven, weave seven locks of my long, beautiful hair, and you weave that in your loom, uh, then I will be uh, uh, as, as a normal man. Oh. Said, all right, come on, bring them in here. And she got the loom, you know, and she weaved it, however that works. And and uh, then and they came to get him. He he laughed. He's like, I got you again. Three times he mocked her. And then we see in verses sixteen and seventeen, and we're about to draw this to a close. Day after day, she begged, she pleaded. Maybe <laughs> the power of a nagging woman. I probably shouldn't have said that. Can we edit that out? Too late. Okay, that's not good. Chapter 16. And it came to this verse 16. And it came to pass when she pressed him daily. Oh, that. With her words. And urged him so that his soul was vexed until he was driving her. He couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so verse 17 said that he told her all his heart. She got it. The Philistines couldn't do it. The soldiers couldn't do it. The big, they, no, but a woman wore him down. He told her all his heart. He said, you know, Delilah, I'm a Nazarite. And my hair's never been cut. And that's where my strength comes from. So he slept. Finally, there's peace. <laughs> Finally, she shut up. Thank you. Head, don't, no, that's not the right place to say amen. <laughs> Can we scratch that one too? All right. Head's in her lap. He's sleeping. She goes, hey, let's go. Hair's gone. He wakes up. Here comes the men to get him. Samson's like, Pfft. here we go again. Won't y'all ever learn? Wait a minute. Something ain't right here. Uh-oh. Oh, no. I've messed up now. The final Nazarite vow was now broken. Remember the guidelines God said? Don't cut your hair. Last one. You see, when God tells you something, he's going to keep his rules. He's going to keep his laws. It's just like gravity. 
You may or may not like gravity. You may not agree with gravity. But if you jump out of a plane without a parachute, what's going to happen? That's God's law. God said if you cut your hair, you'll lose your strength. Do you know that God has laws for us? So they captured him, and he was helpless. He was as a, as a normal man. <clears throat> God's supernatural strength had left him. He was, verses 21 and 22, in Gaza, they put his eyes out as, as a form of, of, of humiliation and, rare, and rendering him helpless. They put him in a, a, a grinding wheel to grind wheat, and they, they harnessed him in, and he would go around and turn this wheel and grind as an animal, as a slave. They put out his eyes. They forced him to grind meal in a prison house. Work usually reserved for an oxen or slaves. Think with me. How far has the mighty fallen? He'd broken each of the three Nazarite vows. He'd been deceived by Delilah. He was blind and weak and fettered. He was a captive. Let me remind you of something, church. He lost his strength. He lost his sight, and he lost his service. Do you know what sin will do? Listen to me, church. Sin finds you, it binds you, and it grinds you. That's what sin does. That's what happens when you choose to break God's laws intentionally, repeatedly as your lifestyle. You can get by with it for a while. Samson did. It finds you, it binds you, and it grinds you day after day. What must he have thought? What, what do you think was going through his mind? I had it all. Well, he had time to think. His hair started to grow back as time passed. And eventually, he did what we read in verse 28. He did what you and I should do. He called, he stopped, and he thought, and he realized where he was, and he looked in the mirror, and he cried out to God, and he said, Oh, God, remember me. Or maybe it was, God, remember me. Remember, I'm your guy. One more little favor, God. Is it. Would you bring my strength back? Even in this verse 28, even in, watch. I pray thee only this once, God, that I may at once avenge. <laughs> He's still Samson. God, I, one last chance, shot at revenge right here. Well, y'all know the story, right? One day as the princes gathered, this is verses 23 through 31, the end of the story. One day as the princes gathered, let's celebrate. They were worshiping their God, Dagon, their God. They were worshiping and partying. Samson was in bondage. He said, let's bring him out. Let's humiliate him. Let's make fun of him. This once giant, our enemy, and now we're worshiping our God. Blinded Samson was escorted by a boy. And he said, could you take me to the pillar? And if you know about construction, there are certain load-bearing parts to any facility. And he said, take me to the pillars. By the way, I wonder what Satan says when he wants to destroy a church. 
wonder what Satan says when he wants to destroy a home. Take me to the pillars. Said, so, boy, lead me over to the pillars and put my hands on those pillars. Here he is. Y'all know what's going to happen, right? Blind Samson was escorted into the court. This place was filled with Philistines. 3,000 Philistines watching, making fun. Royalty! In this convention center of a place. Then he prayed, verse 28. Remember me, strengthen me one more time. Lord, let me die with my enemies. And his strength returned. And the building rumbled. And the pillars began to crack. And God brought down the ceiling on this magnificent structure. The whole roof collapsed amidst the screams of the Philistine rulers and all the people. Samson lost his life with his enemies. In death, he killed more Philistines than he did during his lifetime. As I close, I want to wrap this up. I want to give you, our time is gone. The Philistines were conquered and God was glorified. His power was manifested and the heathen were shown that their idol Dagon was no God at all. So died the once great Samson, strongest man who ever lived, blinded as a slave. Might the story have ended differently? Did it have to end that way? How will your story end? Will your story end with obedience? With submission to God? Or will you have to learn that the hard way? with pain and death and broken victims all around you because of your choices to follow your flesh instead of God's laws. How does your story end? Well, before I pray, I got good news for you, church. Do you know that every sermon should end at the cross? That's where I want to take you today. I have good news for you today. God will never give up on you. Never. When you give up on yourself, and I imagine Samson gave up on himself. I wasted it. I blew it. I'm useless. It's over. But God said no. You're here today. You're not here by accident. You may give up on yourself. You may give up on God. What I do, preacher, you do verse 16, 28. You do what Samson did. Call out to God. God, remember me. Help me. Deliver me. Use me. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. I'm going to pray. We see how Samson's story ended. How will your story end? You know what? It will end based on the decisions that you make today and tomorrow. You know, a dad will make a decision about his, ham his family. A wife will make a decision about her children and her husband. All of you will make decisions Call out to God. He never gives up on you. Father, somebody needs you today. Somebody's broken. Somebody has lost hope. God, would they call out to you? Lord, would you give them, would you restore them? Deliver them and bring them life. 
Help us to learn from the life of Samson. In Jesus' name. The thing that I hold on to with this story more than anything is the pictures painted that Samson has this amazing and great gift. But what, but what limits him more than anything is his, the very fact that he has this great gift. And it's how he uses that gift. And that's the challenge that we all face because we're all gifted in some aspect or form and through experience in our professions that we're now in, or maybe it's a natural talent that you've had for most of your life. But what's more important than the fact that you have the gift? How do you use the gift? And really, it's not even the fact that it's a gift. And yeah, gifts are possessions, it's abilities, it's talents. But God doesn't even see the things that he, that he allows you to have. We, we look at it as a gift. But God sees it and wants to use it as a platform. What you call a gift, God calls a platform. What you call a home, God calls a platform. What you call a talent, God calls a platform. What you call a profession and job, God calls a platform. God wants to turn that around. And that's where it starts with us. I forgot to bring my jar up here. I got really excited this morning. I walked up and there was a jar and I swore, I got my favorite brand of pickles is Clawson. So I got, forgive me, I got excited when I saw this, not because it had money in it, but pickles. I don't, I'm not a Mount Olive guy. I've lost half the congregation. That's okay. But here's the thing. This is why there's a coin shortage now. Uh, but I don't care what it is or what God has allowed you to have. Is it a gift or is it a platform? This is a little jar, but someone wants to use it to bless and empower God, God's church to take their next step. And that's where I want to end today. And so I want y'all to turn to open your bulletin and I want to follow up with what Pastor Snow presented last week where De where Pastor Snow presented and opened his heart and thoughts about an opportunity that we have been given here at the church one of those announcements you'll see is next week April 3rd we will have a vote uh, as part of our church and bylaws, those of you if you're a first time guest you're like a vote do you do this all no 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 this is only the third vote in 7 years but part of our bylaws is to purchase and sell property that the church is pursuing. And so CCMP members, I promise this is not my plug to increase membership either. But the paperwork is in the back too. You, need, you have to be a member to vote. CCMP members will vote at the close of the service on April 3rd, which is next week. To allow the growth team to pursue the purchase of the old middle school campus at Main Street and 49. And that is a vote to, that is a vote for the growth team to negotiate the purchase of that, of that facility. And so with that in mind, I also want to bring your attention to Ignite. Because at Ignite, which takes place tomorrow, that's our normal monthly business meeting. We end up having a lot more fun than just a business meeting. But that is our op that's going to be our opportunity, which is tomorrow, to share and give you details because we do not want you to vote on something or ask you to vote on something that we do not know and have given you all the details that we have about. And so I, I encourage you, if this is what you're interested in, and we, we want to give you as many details as possible, please come to Ignite tomorrow and we will share that with y'all. And it will be open there on the table, literally. And then we can make the best decision that we can for the future of what God wants to do in this community. It's not about CCMP getting glory. Let me make that clear. It is about God getting the glory in whatever decision that we choose to do. And above all else, that is what we need to do. This, build, this campus, if this is what we choose to do, it's just another platform that God would, be, that God would allow us to have. If not, 
we've already got an amazing platform here and we'll have to pursue something else as the doors are full on this kingdom. So this week, what is your platform? What is a gift that you need to hand over because God wants to use it in and through you and he wants to grow you with it. So this week, that is your challenge. Love y'all. Thank you for being here. You are dismissed.